Breaking in a new tape tonight. A new tape? New tape. Oh. Went through one already. On the fatal. Really? We've got three sessions of conclusion. This is number five. First one we didn't take. This is the fourth session. But on tape. Before we go in, let's play for a few minutes, right? Do we choose partners? Yes. <laughs> Would you agree there's such a thing as this? Call number. Would you go further and say, not only that have you have heard about it, that in some way you can say number exists? Alright, we can say that. All right. okay. uh, now, would you agree its existence can be represented in a variety of ways? of the parts, each part is a one, no more, no less. We do not go further and say that it also has certain qualities we can say for the moment. And I'm using the qualities in a special way. Right? It can be odd, can it not? Mm -hmm. As an example. Not even, not a fraction. Right. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Efficient. Abundant. Right. Prime. Opposite. Now, I'm going to shift, and we'll go back to this in a minute. I want to deal with three words, and I'm not going to mention the words, but I'm going to talk about the suffix. And you will come up with any number of words. Just be placed in these boxes. this we're going to restructure the English language so it's more rational. Aren't we? Okay. What kinds of words have this? Hmm? 
Verbs. Can. What kind of words have that? Action. Pass. Can you apple? Mm -hmm. Pass your verb. Can you chair? You mean verb? I don't know. <coughs> oh, God, you know. Well, I said just... past tense. So I yeah, you can chair. A person chaired a meeting. Would that be the same chaired as this? No. Oh. So, what do you call this? A verb. Verbs? How about the same thing here? Same thing here? Pardon me? Barbara? I was just saying, it creates a, it creates a noun, doesn't it? What does? Good. This? I'm trying to think, yeah. Well, Creating what kinds of things are in here first? It's a state, isn't it? Creating new. That's a noun. What kind of things are in there? Different kinds of things, like, oh. like adjectives. Like, Give me a couple. Um, Crazy. Good. Uh -huh. Adjectives. Okay. What others? Mm, Nouns. Nouns. How about that call you mentioned a moment ago? Adverb? Yeah. Can that go in there too? I don't know. Mm, don't or, or, How about in here? Orderliness. Orderliness. How about, in there? How about the, in here? Yeah, that's in here. Those adjectives go in there, making adverbs, don't they? Adverbs, leanness. Free, freely. Or no, no, I'm talking about the one above. I thought we were talking about the one above. That would be a. In adverb. here? That's yeah, adverb. Creates an adverb. Creates an adverb. No, no. What's in here before you get that bump in there? That's an adverb. No, it is. Does the freely. Does this make it an adverb? Yes. Well, I want to know what's in here before you attack that on. Oh, I see. Right. So. See, it's this plus that equals an adverb, right? Well, then a verb. Adjectives are in there. Adjectives, yeah. same thing. Mm -hmm. And two other men. And verbs. And verbs. Yeah. Well, that's why I want to know. Can verbs go in here too? Well, you'll deal with that in a minute. Three. Okay. Now I need some candidates. Give me one that can go through all three. Ordered, orderly. Ordered, Order, orderly. 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 How about one? Uh, one is? Okay, one. look here. One. Look here. Try, all right, we have one candidates. Now. Only. We have order. candidates. So only. far we have order. Only. <coughs> order. Does order fit? Order. I think ordered. Orderly. 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 And orderly. Orderliness. Wait, wait a minute, do you need the L-Y-N-S? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do it. Wait a minute, then, then we need, right, then we need a fourth category. Right. Or you have an adverb in that case. L-Y plus Ness. Or you could have an adverb in that last section. Yeah, this one? Yeah. No, no the one before. Yeah, yeah. Adverbs, adverbs, adverbs. Adverbs. adverbs in here, too, you'd also put in here? Yeah, then you won't have to make it. How about brave? All right, how about brave? Will that go three ways? Bravely. Brave. 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 Death. Bravely. 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 What's, what's the difference between this one? Is that just phonetic? Yes. Well, okay, I got two now. Shall I go for three? Uh, just. Just. Mm -hmm. just. Just. How about Justed. love? Love. Love. Loved. Lovely. Yes. Loveness. <laughs> Loveness. Loveliness. That doesn't work. Well, that's Lochness. That's not love. Loveliness. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> what I'm looking for is... All right, I'll show you where I'm going, right? What we're going to do is that we're going to single out words that take two but not the third hmm mm -hmm. so let's try that one. all right love all right loved lovely lovely yeah. loveliness how about loveliness is that the phonetic value yes well then it works doesn't it yes i need another one here i'll give you one an example all right how about uh the word, how about strong? 
Strong nuts. Strong men. Strength. Strength, yeah. That's what I'm dealing with, all right? As an example, let me give you one which I'm sure you'll see in all three. Fool. Fool? Fool. Fool? 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 Go ahead. What would you have to change it to? Wouldn't it have to be falling? Fooly. All right. Look here. Falling. 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 And what would be the second? The third? Foolish. 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 That's what I mean by we're going to change the ground. We're going to change the rules of spelling in our language. All it right. should be done. All right. This is the way it's going to be for tonight only. Fool. And fooled, fully, fully, right? Fully, mm -hmm. and come on, that's fullness, fullness, ness, fullness, fullness, yeah, right? Look here. In other words, <laughs> look here. Are there certain words that should appear this way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for all kinds of phonetic values, we change the words to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, but then, wait a minute. This is really what it what it really is, right, Barbara? Mm -hmm. And through all kinds of linguistic rules, it comes out this way. Well, folly isn't fooling. Folly isn't an, uh, an L-Y word. Right. Okay. But what would you put in here? Stands alone. It's what would folly stands alone. Folly is a noun. Folly is in the class of foolishness. Is falling. Yeah, that's another name but for noun. But fooly is. But I thought the point you were making was that we want. Yeah. Would as foolish. Foolish. Yeah. What would be fooly? Fo foolish. Foolish uh, is foolish. be too. Foolishly. Foolishly. Foolish. Foolishly. Foolish. 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 Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank but he was foolish. Foolish. Lee. Right. He was foolish. That's a great example. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. a great example. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look here. Foolishness would be a word too. Yeah. So ish. All right. Look here. Can we find others like brave? What, would, what happens to brave? Brave. 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 Bravely. Bravely. Yeah, you got to go to bravery. 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 Strengthness. Strength. Strengthness. What do we do with strength? Strength. Strong. 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 Strongly. 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 We can't use strongness. Can we use strength? Yeah. For here. See what that means is that the, these properties, the property of this in our language, is then obscured. Isn't it? Even though it's there, we change the words. Even though it's functioning that way, we disguise it, put it in a word. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to right. We don't have a set. That's like an inflected language, is what you're looking. That's at. right. This is an inflected language, right? This would be, in other words, a pure inflected language would preserve, would it not? Right? A pure inflected language would preserve these distinctions. Mm -hmm. And would allow you to form words in, right. a, in a certain fashion. Right. Like that. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have any irregulars. You wouldn't have no irregulars. Everything would, it would be set paradigms right. and everything could go through it. That's right. In other words, this is, this is the paradigm. Mm -hmm. And everything should be used in respect to that. Yeah. Now tell me. What's the relationship between uh, these two? Whatever you put in there. Order. Order. When this has been accomplished, it's that. It gets that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same with the next one. And therefore, we can say it's in the past. Correct. Same with the next one. Right? 
So it about builds. Order lead. What's the difference between ordered and order lead? It's a manner of accomplishment. It's a manner, right? Mm -hmm. It's a manner. It can be a manner of accomplishment. Right, okay. But, but, the quality but, but doesn't in some, an orderly something manner. becomes orderly after it's ordered? Yes. We've done in an orderly fashion. It's or it can be having habit. the quality of the thing, uh, having the quality of the verb, as opposed to orderly participating in the quality of. It's like modi manner. It, it modifies. Yeah. It's a modification of the verb at that point, or an adverb. It's just thinking that it's sometimes. That's true. It's a modification of it. All right. So it modifies with the property that you put the ly on. Okay. Then what does that do then? It tells you that. Something, right, what has this. What does that do to it? Tells you how it was accomplished or how it was accomplished or the product property it possesses. Yeah. Right. But it's something that must be <coughs> orderly. Some activity. Or activity, mm -hmm. right. Something. Agree? Uh huh. So then look here. Can there be an L Y without the you mean, as a consequence of the property of order, some things then are orderly. Well, then what's ness? It makes a substantive out of something. It's a right. white it's as a opposed to whiteness. It's, right? it's, it's like it's the thing itself. It right. raises or a it state, orderliness. to a state. The state it. itself. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The state or a substantive. Yeah. All right. Look here. Then what would you say is the relationship between these three? If there is this, that's the state, then the way, and then things can, right, things then can what in respect to this? Be orderly. Things are orderly. They participate orderly in orderliness, orderly. in order. That's right. right. Yeah. There is some participation for this to occur. Mm -hmm. All right, how about these? How about? Because of the uh, cause. When it's because been accomplished. The participation, that's right. the thing is ordered. Right. What Socrates is doing in the Phaedo is he's hanging himself on these three. You say this is where this is the intelligibility, and we can go back through that. And if we just change all the words that take irregular forms mm -hmm. and revert them back to this pure form, they won't be able to read or write through. Now, look, any going back now, any term. Any term can be said to have these kinds of things. All right, now look, let's try it. Eid, Eilid, and Inus. Yeah, each one of these I'm going to call has a certain, <coughs> all of these share something in common. All right. Let's All of these share something in common. This is the state. This it participates. This it tells you it had participated. And you can use all the verb forms to show you when and if and I know. Participated then in respect to oneself or passively would be the middle voice. Agree? Barbara? Read the value one more time. Ordered. Mm -hmm. It tells you that it's already been accomplished. There are many ways of expressing the way. In other words, this deals with respect to time. Mm -hmm. When it participated. Because you could put other verb tenses to that, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Will order. Well, pardon? Will order. Will order. Is order. ordering. Right, right, right. If it were ordered. Right. Take it out of time altogether. Okay, now, I want to know what kinds of things can be in all three categories. Now, we have some. What, what's common? Anything common? What kinds of things can go through these, have all three? Remember my first example? Chair. Right. It's got to be an action. That's a noun. That's a thing. Yeah. Okay, you mean, hey, wait a minute. Take those, <coughs> all right? Would you say no things? Yeah. No things. No things. No things. 
if no things, what else are there? Relations. Right? They're either things, you either talk about things or relations. Right? A is to B. Right? These are things. Right? The way in which they relate, right? That's relations. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. all right. Now, you want to say in general that all of these take on these qualities? Let's try, all right? Are there any relations that we can't put into these three? Mm. Brave, is that a relation? Equal. We can put that to all three. Equal, equally, and equalness. What's common to all this stuff? These words? Equal, order, brave, just. They're all ideas, aren't they? Certain class of ideas. They're a class of ideas. What class? Not things, they're a class of ideas. Okay. I ran. All right. If I want to describe how I ran, fast. Fast. All right. Fast. Quickly. Fastly. Fast. Fastness. How can I use these three words? Or notice we'll, we may have to change them. How about I ran swift, swiftly? There was swiftness in your running. There was swiftness in my running, right? <laughs> Fleet-footed. Great. <laughs> oh, yes. Fleet-footed Achilles. Right, so that this doesn't work, does it? I mean, that's clumsy. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between fast and swift? None. Right, there is no well, way to say. That's it moves swiftly. <laughs> What we need is Proticus to find out the difference between right. swift and fast. Mm -hmm. Might be a rabbit. Mm -hmm. that's okay, clear. that's another word in this Lightning. stack. Lightning. Isn't it? Yeah, that would fit. Yeah, light. Swiftly. 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 But that's not a relationship. That's a, that's modifying a relationship. Light. Ran is the relationship. Swiftly modifies, tells how he ran. Yeah, tells how he modifies. Right? Yeah, but what do we mean when we say modifiers? It qualifies it. It's not the thing proper in the, in the neuter sense without a need. It's the thing he talks about in the Republic, you know, thirst itself is for drink itself. Much thirst is for much drink. Little for little, it qualifies it. it uh, so it's a kind of thirst. It's a kind of running. It's a kind of the thing itself. It's not the, It's not stripped and neuter. <clears throat> How about that? The way anything is done. It says the same thing, yeah, sure. Right. Oh, okay. By the way, the way anything is done, would you go further and say it could also be done in an opposite way? Sure. Poorly and well. It's so done it's poorly. It's done you mean that all these terms have their opposites? Slowly. Come on, sorry. Dark. Okay, dark. Are uh, all of these opposites? Can all of these have opposites? Will all of these have opposites, right? Okay, look. You know what we're saying then? That whatever a thing is, whatever a thing is, which we may or may not concern ourselves with, there's some great mysteries about what a thing is. 
But at least we know one thing about a thing, that we can say that it, enter, it enters into certain kinds of relations or relationships. These are the terms. They seem to have a certain interesting quality to them, don't they? That is to say, all of these is a way in which we can describe the way in which anything is done, which admits also that it can be done in its opposite way, therefore these are all opposites. All right, you go along with that? For every one of these terms, we can always find an opposite. We need you to come up with a couple of cases of ones that don't have it. So, look here, remember that thing we were looking for in here? What's the thing, regardless of what term you put in here? Whatever you put in here, you'll yep. always have an opposite. Therefore, these are opposites. Therefore, whatever logic follows about opposites in general would apply for these terms in particular. Now, that's the secret, well known, behind Platonic dialogues. He'll always go for opposites, one way or the other. Right? He'll give you one, and you have to find the other, and so forth, right? Yeah. And then he'll talk about the properties of them and how, what kinds of laws govern opposites. Then he'll establish like the logic of opposites, and then if there's a particular issue at hand, you'll pick it up and say, oh, I'm going to put it right in here. It's a class of relative terms. Class of relative terms. Because right, there's a way in which opposites can function. They, can also compar they also can function comparatively. Right? Special way. Like great er, small er, great yes. Right? Then you can have a whole set of them, can you not? Right? These are comparatives, but not all comparatives follow this the general logic of opposites. Right? There's, a, there's two classes of opposites. Those are the comparative, those that are pure. As an example, uh, would you put, remember the one we did once before? What was that? Uh, oh, yeah. Asleep awake. Are those opposites in the same way greater and smaller opposites? No. Well, these admit a degree as the final no. equal sign. Right. The sleep admit a degree of right. flesh. Right. Sound sleep? Right. That's right. Light sleep. And that's usually when someone says that, they usually mean little soup. Sound sleep, middle C. Wait a second. <laughs> <Tilt>. <laughs> okay, now. Now he goes a step further. All right. Now there are a class of ideas, not things, all right? So now we have the third. All right? There can be there can be things, there can be relations, and there can be ideas. There are three classes. All right. So that when we're talking about ideas, <coughs> as an example, is number a thing? Only in that loose sense in which we can talk about it. Right? But certainly not a thing the way chairs and tables and all the other things are things. Agree? All right. Okay. So then, therefore, when we talk about this case, we're talking about ideas. The class, this is a particular example of an idea. The kind of an idea that isn't a thing, doesn't have physical properties. Okay, now, when he talks about opposites, and he applies them to things. As an example, we can take the comparative. When there are three people, this person, this, pardon me, this person is greater than this person and less than this person. So you can say, 
is res in respect to this, this person in some way can use greater and lesser or greater and smallness can in comparatively speaking that's that's when using the comparative so what we want to know is how to use these terms e d l y n s not when we're talking about things when we're talking about ideas right, so what does he have to do he has to establish Three sets of rules, three realms of discourse. But it's going to always be the same basic problem. So, would you say number exists? Then, whether you like it or not, if you say number exists, what do you also admit? Ideas, ideas exist because that's the parent. Right? Then, ideas such as numbers can take on a symbolic form. All right, they can be symbolized, can they not? They can have particular names, can they not? They can have a content, can they not? They can have qualities, can they not? Since you're already granted they have existence. Now, this part that we're getting into, he says number three takes on oddness. Right? And now the question is, can three, can the number, the idea of three, continue to be the number of three if it accepts into itself evenness? Say evenness. See, what's he doing? He's talking about the, front, the, the way in which this nest functions. Right. Right. So with ideas, wow, that's really interesting, right? Because over here, something can be greater and smaller. It admits both, doesn't it? Comparatively speaking, any comparative can admits purely in terms of how it is related to other things. It can be greater and smaller. The same thing. Can the same thing be odd and even? No, but it can be greater and smaller, six and three and two. Yeah, yeah. Comparatively. Yeah. Right? When you work on the comparative, fine. Yeah. Okay. I just want to play Please, a little bit now. Okay, now I want to use one word before we go to the text. How is he using now this word? Boy, it sure is a strange word. Yeah. And I assure you, I have no idea what I mean by it when I use it. But uh, we'll try to figure out what he means. Well, we worked on that some last time. Yeah. That's what I want to get at. You see. We've already been, we already have been using that word, cause. When we say the LY, for an LY to exist at all, presupposes it participates in an S. That's a cause. Mm -hmm. all right? For an ED, to say an ED means it must have already participated in an S. That's a cause. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Nesses are causes of LYs and EDs. Pinsky's famous third law. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Fever. Now Fever. he never he never deals with cause in the way you know modern physics tries to deal with cause, particular causes that impact in other particular things. He never uses the word cause. Right. So he's looking at these things. Three, four, five. And he wants to discover how the nesses, the particular nesses, which are opposites, what kind of rules, what kinds of properties they must have. The logic of them. So. You could say he's trying to, to cite the law nest monster, is that right? The law nest. <laughs> Barbara buys beer. Put us through such torture. Yeah, I agree. I want two packs. Well, you bring two oddnesses together, like three and five, you get evenness. <laughs> well, that's what I find interesting about the example he gives of ten. 
right? Because when he gives the example of 10, remember, he says, that's even, it doesn't admit of odd. Therefore, he doesn't see 10 as two odds, mm -hmm. fives. Doesn't he say twice five at one place? Yeah. But he doesn't take them that way. He takes them this way, collections. Mm -hmm. And in the collections, they are, there. see, there's where each part is a one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't form subgroups. Which, which really, taking it this way, that's a difference from here and Pythagoras. You know, Pythagoras does have that idea that numbers have a certain kind of basic form, right? Like six is made up of a collection like that. Yeah. I'm reading a study, by the way, of a guy who was trying to understand how these people who appear to be mentally incompetent on a variety of ways of looking at it, get their geniuses in respect to their ability to come up with all kinds of numerical computations. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy has very interesting theory. He says what they're able to perceive like we perceive objects is primes. Hmm. And it's the way of looking at primes can, can then solve problems like, uh, say, in the year 38 AD, January 3rd, was that a Saturday or a Friday, Harry? Lord, you're going to be a Wednesday. <laughs> and he's always right. <coughs> so in any case, this guy's theory is that right? he did that with a group of them. It was even where he threw out a bunch of stuff at random, you know, on the floor and said, how many of the other guy looked and gave the number? When he gave the number, he used a prime first. He said, oh, that's 37. I see 37. Like, how do you see 37? He said, don't you? <laughs> and there were there were a number of thirty sevens. All he did was add up the number of thirty seven. Mm -hmm. There was a boy that could do this. It was a training method for children, in fact, in education, and it allowed them to see groups. Well, then maybe they're trying to make everyone an idiot. Yeah. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, we go to work. Back where we were last time. to give you an account of the way in which I have conducted my second voyage in the quest of course. I wish it with all my heart. I am on page uh, 99, uh, Stephanus number 99, D. After this then, since I have given up investigating realities, I decided that I must be careful not to suffer the misfortune which happens to people who look at the sun and watch it during an ellipse. For some of them ruin their eyes unless they look at its image in water or something of that sort. I thought about danger. I was afraid my soul would be blinded that I looked at things with my eyes and tried to grasp them with any of my senses. So, I must have recourse to conceptions and examine them, in them, the truth of realities. Now perhaps my metaphor is not quite accurate. For I do not grant, in the least, that he who studies realities by means of conceptions of looking at them in images any more than he who studies them in the facts of daily life. However, that is the way I began. Some in each case, some principle which I consider strongest. Whatever seems to me to agree with this, whether relating to cause or anything else, I regard as true. Whatever disagrees with it is untrue. But I want to tell you more clearly what I mean, for I think you do not understand. Not very well, I'll tell you that, said Sidious. Well, this is what I mean. It's nothing special. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, try to explain to you the nature of the cause, which I have been studying. And we'll revert those familiar subject for 
points of departure and assume they have such things as fish. What are they? They're all opposites. Beauty, good, greatness, and like it should be in terms of our language. Beautiness, goodness, greatness, and the like. If you grant this and agree that these exist, that will be a simple matter to apply all of these principles to the idea and the problem of whether the soul is immortal or not. So we need a couple of readers and we, we push and we try to change the language as we go on and see whether what we've done on the board can help us do this. All right, who wants to read? I'll answer. You? Barbara? Yeah. Right on. Where are we at? Paul, want to go? Where are you at? I'm without a book. Oh, okay. I can't have a book. I have one. How about it? Into it? Want to play CD? Okay. Sure. Paul? Okay. All right, Barbara, want to start with? Sure. You said now, and now, now yes, I do not get a you can see me. Or want to wave the gene money? Wave the gene if you want. But nobody in here says answer. Somebody else took CVs. There's no, you have to take the one that's the opposite. You like my letter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called rhetorical logic. Rhetorical logic. <laughs> I'm going to take a course in rhetorical logic. <laughs> you should. You've been taking a course in rhetorical dialectic for years. Yeah. <laughs> Learned it well. Had some good teachers. Rhetorical logic must be the sister course to logical rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Rhetorical <laughs> logic is the kind of logic that you persuade yourself. <laughs> That's right. You do something and then you justify it later. <laughs> Let's reduce the guilt and shame. Those steps are well used. Gina. agree with me in the next step. I think that is that if anything is beautiful besides absolute beauty, it is beautiful for no other reason than because it partakes of absolute beauty. And this applies to everything. So we would reread that by saying, I think that if anything is beautifulness besides Beauty. It is beautiful. Right. Beautiful. Beautifully. It's beautifully. Right. 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 For no other reason than because it partakes of beautiness. Now this applies to everything. Okay. Kang has that great line. I do. Oh, I forgot to use sentence for your cause. And then you said, now I do not yet understand, nor can I perceive those other ingenious causes. If anyone tells me that what makes a thing beautiful is its lovely color, or its shape, or anything else of this sort, I let all that go, for all those things confuse me. And I hold simply and plainly and perhaps foolishly to this, that nothing else makes it beautiful but the presence or communion, call it which you please, of that to be beautifulness, beautiness, yes. whatever, however it may have been gained. This would seem to me. And nothing else makes it beautifully. 
Yeah. Yeah. But the presence or communion, call it which you please, of beautiness, however it may have been gained. No, wouldn't it be nothing makes it beautiful? Might be also. Beautiful. See, however it may have, however it may have been gained, Four. is an adverb. Right. Right. That would so, be beautifully. That would be beautifully. Right. But that's but see that nothing makes it beautifully. I would think because doesn't that mean doesn't it? However, it goes with that passage. Okay. So I let all 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 that go for all those things confuse me, and I so we focus on how it's gained as a cause. Science seems that's to pick right. up how it's gained. Mm -hmm. That's not his view of cause. That's not his. That's no. why all of these people have the the objection to Plato's doctrine of participation. Don't understand it. No, it's they they. It's they, not a third. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they focus on the how. Yeah. I, I didn't understand but, your point. Run it by me again, Mark. Well, isn't isn't the view of a cause of something is how it was accomplished? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How how it came yeah. To, and he says, huh, however, they gain. That's not. Huh. Okay. So his his focus is other than that. Yeah. And not just other than that. No, Communion? it's gain by necessity. There's something that he goes before gain. He goes before the word how. It couldn't it be. be. You're right. It couldn't be unless the condition existed, and he's calling that condition that which is before the how. He's calling that cause. That's what he means by cause. Hmm. The condition for it to be. Hmm. See, he hit the ball, but if it hadn't been for the pitch and the bat and so forth, he couldn't hit it. The, the Amazing. condition was there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay, charge. About the way in which it happens, about the way in which it happens, I make no positive statement as yet, but I do insist that beautiful things are made beautifully by beautiness. For I think this is the safest answer I can give to myself or to others, and if I cleave fast to this, I think I shall never be overthrown, and I believe it is safe for me or anyone else to give this answer, that beautiful things are beautifully through beautiness. Do you agree? I do. And great things are greatly and greater things greaterly by greatness. And smaller things smallerly by smallness. See? That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Up and down those terms. Yes. Mm -hmm. That the Mm. And you would not accept the statement if you were told that one man was greater, greaterly or smallerly than another by a head, but you would insist that you say only that every greaterly thing is greaterly than another by nothing other than greatness. Right. That's the condition for it being greater. Mm -hmm. That it must have participated in, in greatness. greatness. Right. And that which is smaller is smaller by nothing else than smallness, and is smaller by reason of smallness. For you would, I think, be afraid of meeting with the retort if you said that a man was greater or smaller than another by a head. First that the greater is greater and the smaller is smaller by the same thing. And secondly that the greater man is greater by a head which is small and that it is a monstrous thing that one is great by something that is small. Would you not be afraid of this? Yes, I should. Then you would be afraid to say that ten is more than eight by two, and that this is the cause. It is more. Then you would be afraid to say that ten is more than eight by two, and that this is the cause it is more. You would say it is more by number and by reason of number. And a two cubic measure is say greater. Say by number -ness. Yeah. number -ness. number -ness. Okay. number -ness. And by reason of number -ness. And, and measure -ness. See, That's a shift. Yes, now he's going. Right. You'd expect him to say that... What do you say? No, no. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he's talking about ideas, numbers. Yeah. And a two cubic measure 
is greater than a one cubic measure, not by half, but by magnitude. But by measurements. Measuredness. See, we, we don't keep the words running. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. take irregular forms. Mm -hmm. The words should be measurements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no magnitude, so it cannot be said. For you would have the same fear. Sunday. Well then, if one is added to one, or if one is divided, you would avoid saying that the addition or the division is the cause of two. You would explain, exclaim loudly that you know no other way by which anything can come into existence than by partaking in the properness of each thing mm -hmm. in which it participates. And therefore, you accept no other cause of the existence of two than participation in two-ness. Okay, now, we can finally ask this question, right? That you just correctly anticipated, right? Nessus or Sarah? Everything has a class and absolutely see it. Yeah. <coughs> you would explain loudly that you know no you know no other way by which anything can come into existence than by participating in the proper ness of each thing in which it participates. Therefore, you accept no other cause of the existence of two than it participates in two-ness. And things which are to be two must participate in two-ness, and whatever is to be one must participate in oneness. And you would pay no attention to the divisions and additions and other such subtleties, leaving the, those for wiser men to explain. You would distrust your inexperience and would be afraid, as the saying goes, of your own shadow. So you would cling to that safe principle of ours and would reply, as I have said. And if anyone attacked the principle, you would pay him no attention and you would not reply to him until you had examined the consequences to see whether they agreed with one another or not. And when you had to give an explanation of the principle, you would give it in the same way, by assuming some other principle which seemed to you <coughs> seemed to you best of the higher ones, and so until you reached so on until you reached one which was adequate. You would not mix things up as disputants do in talking about the beginning and its consequences if you wish to discover any of the realities, for perhaps not one of them thinks or cares in the least about these things. They are so clever that they succeed in being well pleased with themselves even when they mix everything up. But if you are a philosopher, I think you will do as I have said. That's true. Yeah. Equities and Plato? By Zeus, Sato, they were right. It seems to me that he made those matters astonishingly clear. If anyone, to anyone, even a little sense. Okay. You play Hecrates? Okay. Pardon me, Phaedo. Oh, okay. Certainly, Hecrates and all who were there thought so too. And so do we, who are not there, and they're hearing about it now. What was said after that? As I remember it, after all this had been d admitted, and they had agreed that each of the abstract qualities exists, and that other things which participate in these get their names from them, and talking to that... Is that interesting? It compacts all of that. Mm -hmm. All right? I mean, that's a lot. As I remember right. They all agree that each of these qualities, the nesses, exists. And other things which partake, participate in these get their names from them.
Okay, church. Now, if you assent to this, do you not, when you say that Simeus is greater than Socrates and smaller than Phaedo, say that there is in Simeus greatness and smallness? Yes. But you agree that the statement that Simeus is greater than Socrates is not true as stated in those words. For Simeus is not greater than Socrates by reason of being I was just wondering if they if they were using that word for cause in there. Mm -hmm. whether, what the Very is. likely. For Simeus is not greater than Socrates by reason of being Simeus, but by reason of the greatness he happens to have. Nor is he greater than Socrates, because Socrates is Socrates, but because Socrates has smallness relative relatively to his greatness. To compare. So And again, he is not smaller than Phaedo because Phaedo is Phaedo, but because Phaedo has greatness relatively to Simeus's smallness. Right. And you can have a ness relative in respect to relationships you enter into. That is true. The things can have nesses. Things. Right. Relative to them. When nesses go into things, they're comparative. Okay, try it. Okay. Then Simeus is called small and great when he is between the two. Right? It's relational. Yeah. Surpassing the smallness of one by exceeding him in height and granting to the other the greatness that exceeds his own smallness. I seem to be speaking like a legal document, but it really is very much as I say. Okay, now he jumps to the Nesses themselves. Not in relationship to things, but the way they interrelate or the rules governing their relationship. Right? See the shift on top of 353? Right. Mm -hmm. I am speaking so because I want you to agree with me. I think it is evident not only that the greatness itself will never be great and also small, but that the greatness in us will never admit the small or allow itself to be exceeded. One of two things must take place. Either it flees or withdraws when its opposite smallness advances toward it or it has already ceased to exist by the time smallness comes near it. But it will not receive and admit smallness, thereby becoming other than it was. So I have received and admitted smallness, and am still that same small person I was. But the greatness in me, being great, has not suffered itself to become small. In the same way, the smallness in us will never become or be great, nor will any other opposite, which is still what it was, ever become or be also its own opposite. It either goes away or loses its existence in the change. Right, that's a principle. It's his first principle among that class. Mm -hmm. That seems to be quite evident. Right, nor will any other opposite, which is still what it was, ever become or be also its own opposite. He goes where? Or loses his existence in the text. No. In one of those who were present, I don't remember. I don't just remember who it was said. Somebody. In heaven's name, is not this present doctrine the exact opposite of what was admitted in our earlier discussion? that the greater is generated from the less and the less from the greater and that opposites are always generated from their opposites. But now it seems to me we are saying that this can never happen. You have smoke, spoken up like a man, but you do not observe the difference between the present doctrine and what we've said before. We said before that in the case of concrete things, opposites are generated from opposites. Whereas now we say that the abstract net 
The abstractness of an opposite can never become its own opposite, either in us or in the world about us. Then we were talking about things which possess nesses and are called after opposite nesses and are called after them. But now about those very nesses, the imis in imbibu, those very opposite nesses, the imminence of which gives the things their names. We say that these latter can never be generated from each other. And you, are you troubled by any of so our friends' should, objections? We should, you know, keep that other one in mind. Seven to eight and read them together, but you can only do one at a time. So we're really saying that you can participate in opposites, but not, but the opposites can never be its opposite. Participation of those ideas. Yeah. You could be both great and small. As a thing. But great is never going to be small, and small is never going to be great. They, we can say, the opposites themselves don't participate in one another. Right. Mm -hmm. But things can participate in opposites simultaneously. They come from opposites. Things. Yeah, they can come as Okay. In that case, the opposites are mutually exclusive. Participation isn't across, so the ideas are here. There's a participation going this way, not that way. Anyway. Beats, I think you got a line. Uh, no, not this time. So I confess that objection often do trouble me. Well, we are quite agreed upon this, that an opposite can never be its own opposite. Entirely agree. Now see if you agree with me in what follows. Is there something that you call heat and something you call cold? Yes. And are they the same as snow and fire? No, not at all. But heat is a different thing from fire, and cold differs from snow. Yeah. And I fancy you believe that snow, if, to employ the form of phrase we used before, it admits heat, will no longer be what it was, namely snow, and also warm, but will either withdraw when heat approaches, or will cease to exist. Certainly. And similarly, fire, when cold approaches it, will either withdraw or perish. It will never succeed in admitting cold and being still fire as it was before and also cold. That is true. The fact is, in some such cases, that not only the abstractness itself has a right to the same name <coughs> through all time, but also something else, which is not the idea, but which, also, but which always whenever it exists, has the form of the idea. Or the embodiment of the idea. And he's going to give an example of that passage in the next part. Perhaps I can make my meaning clearer by some examples. In numbers, the odd must always have the name of odd, must it not? Certainly. But is this the only thing so-called, for this is what I mean to ask, or is there something else which is not identical with the odd, but nevertheless has a right to the name of odd in addition to its own name? Because it is of such a nature that it is never separated from the odd. I mean, for instance, the number three, and there are many other examples. Take the case of three. Do you not think it may always be called by its own name and also be called odd, which is not the same as three? Yet the number three and the number five and half of the numbers in general are so constituted that each of them is odd, though not identified with the idea of odd. And in the same way, two and four and all the other series of numbers are even. Each of them, though not identical, each of them, though not identical with evenness. Do you agree or not? Of course. Now see what I want to make plain. 
This is my point. Not, that not only abstract opposites exclude each other, but all things which, although not opposites one to the other, not only abstract opposites exclude each other, but all things which, though not opposites one to another, always contain opposites. These also, we find, exclude the idea which is opposed to the idea contained in them, and when it approaches, they either perish or withdraw. We must certainly agree that the number three will endure destruction or anything else rather than submit to becoming even while still remaining three. Must we not? Absolutely. But the number two is not the opposite of the number three. No. Then not only opposite ideas refuse to admit each other when they come near, but certain other things refuse to admit the approach of opposites. Very true. Shall we then determine, if we can, what these are? Then, Cebes, will they be those which always compel anything of which they take possession, not only to take their form, but also that of some opposite? What do you mean? Such things as we were speaking of just now. You know, of course, that those things in which the number three is an essential element must be not only three, but also odd. Now, such a thing can never admit the idea which is the opposite of the concept which produces this result. No, it cannot. Watch the word result unfold. Right? <laughs> but the result was produced by the concept of odd. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the opposite of this is the idea of even. Yes. Then the idea of even will never be admitted by the number three. No. Then three has no part in the even. No, it has none. Then the number three is uneven. Yes. Now I propose to determine what things, without being the opposites of something, nevertheless refuse to admit it, as the number three, though it is not the opposite of the idea of even, nevertheless refuses to admit it, but always brings forward its opposite against it, and as the number two brings forward the opposite of the odd, and fire that of cold, and so forth. For there are plenty of examples. Now see if you admit this statement. Not only will opposites not admit their opposites, but nothing which brings an opposite to that which it approaches will ever admit in itself the oppositeness of that which is brought. That's the principle. That's the principle. You have to hang on to that, and that guides the, di the dialogue from this point on. Do it again, I think. From the principle? Not only will opposites. Not only will opposites not admit their opposites, but nothing which brings an oppo opposite to that which it approaches will ever admit in itself the oppositeness of that which is brought. Yeah, so three brings oddness with it okay. yes. against evenness. Yes. That's right. That is to say, it can have qualities. Three will never be even. Yep. Ignorant man will never be wise as long as he's ignorant. Never be Nothing which brings no. an opposite which would be three to that which it approaches, which is what evenness will ever admit itself the evenness of that which is brought. What? Will never admit evenness, which is the opposite of that which is brought, which is oddness. Uh -huh. On and on. What time? On. Did oh. you want to go on? What time is it? Oh, what time is it? Twenty nine. Yeah. Okay. We can. We can finish. Okay. Okay. Refresh my memory. Now let me refresh your memory, for there is no harm in repetition. The number five will not admit the idea of even, of the even, nor will ten, the double of five, admit the idea of the odd. Now ten is not in itself, ten is not itself an opposite, nor yet it will not, and yet it will not. Now let me refresh your memory, for there is no harm in repetition. The number five will not admit the, num the idea of the even, 
nor will ten, the double of five, admit the idea of the odd. Now ten is not itself an opposite, and yet it will not admit the idea of the odd. And so one and a half and other mixed fractions and one third and other simple fractions reject the idea of the whole. Do you go with me and agree with this? Yes, I agree entirely, and I'm with you. Then, please begin again at the beginning, and do not answer my questions in their own words, but do as I do. I give an answer beyond the safe answer which I spoke of at first. Now that I see another safe reply deduced from what has just been said. If you ask me what causes anything in which it is to be hot, what causes anything in which it is to be hot, I will not give you that safe but stupid answer and say that it is heat, but I can now give a more refined answer that it is fire. And if you ask what so causes condition, so fire is a condition of heat. There must be some source for the heat. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's nice. And if you ask what causes the body in which it is to be ill, I shall not say illness, but fever. And if you ask what causes a number in which it is to be in which it is to be odd, I shall not say oddness, but the number one, and so forth. Do you understand sufficiently what I mean? Why should this be? Now answer, what causes the body in which it is to be alive? So. Is this always the case? Yes, of course. Then if the soul takes possession of anything, it always brings life to it? Suddenly. Is there anything that is the opposite of life? Yes. What? Death. Now the soul, as we have agreed before, will never admit the opposite of that which it brings with it. Suddenly, no. Then what do we now call that which does not admit the idea of the even? Uneven. And those which do not admit justice and music? Unjust and unmusical. Then what do we call that which does not admit death? Deathless or immortal. And the soul does not admit death? No. Then the soul is immortal? Yes. Very well. Shall we say then that this is proof? Yes, and very, very, and very satisfactory, exactly. Okay, now he goes, pushes on certain implications of this. But, but uh, you know that principle he makes, if somebody becomes musical, they can't be unmusical. Mm. They can't, by music, become unmusical. Mm -hmm. They can never admit the opposite. You can't buy, you can't produce the opposite with an opposite of the opposite. Mm -hmm. You can't, in the same principle, if there's some art to justice or righteousness, then you can't use justice to produce someone who's unjust. You can't produce music to make someone a music. It's rather interesting, isn't it? Going back to what we're doing. To see where you have to put your homework then and those principles. It seems like this really stresses the value of, of um, likeness because you can never admit the thing as long as you're opposed to it. So therefore you have to become like it. Uh, you know, imitation. Yeah. yeah. It's really makes this yeah. the significance of that is driven home there. Yeah. And one cannot help imitating that which one admires. Thanks is good. But thanks is good. Oh! Then we can proceed from here to the end. Next time. Did this help any? Okay.